In this screencast video lecture, we are going to see about the general characteristic features of the invertebrates group of animals. Invertebrates neither possess nor develop a vertebral column that is derived from the notochord. This includes all animals apart from the subphylum vertebrata that is vertebrata are having the notochord and they will have the vertebral column whereas all other phylum found to have invertebrate group of animals. So, they do not have a backbone and 97 percentage of the animals in this earth belonging to the category of invertebrates. It has been estimated 2.16 million species of invertebrates seems to exist. They are found in the different places of the earth from the driest part of the deserts, high altitude areas, even the wettest rain forests. Sometimes they can be come across there in the frozen Antarctic lakes and also in the deepest part of the oceans. Invertebrates are so many as that it is impossible to count them at all. However, there is a lot of differences there in their shape, size and they play a vital role there in the survival of this earth. Say for example, honeybees are important group of invertebrates that play a major role there in the pollination. Thereby, they play the role in the crop production and productivity indirectly helping the humankind. Next, we look at the types of invertebrates that can be come across there in the world. Broadly, they can be divided into two forms that is members that live in the terrestrial environments and members that live in the freshwater as well as marine water environments. They are referred as a freshwater and marine water invertebrates. First, we look at some list of the Terrestrial environment invertebrates. This includes spider, various insects, worms, slaters, land hoppers, centipedes, millipedes, as well as the velvet worms. Next comes the list of freshwater and marine invertebrates. Sometimes this group of organisms were also land dwelling members, that is, they can present in the land also. It includes sea stars and sea urchins, sea anemone and corals, snails and slugs, sponges, blue bottles as well as jellies, crabs, prawn, crayfish and lobsters. Now, we look at the characteristic features of the invertebrates. The main differentiating characteristic feature of the invertebrate is they do not possess a spinal cord or vertebral column that is the one mainly differentiating it from the other groups of organisms. Instead of that, this organism possesses a thick exoskeleton there on the entire surface of the body. In general, these organisms are tiny and do not grow to a large size at all. They are cylindrical in appearance and they are triploblastic that is based on the germinal layer of the cells. They are triploblastic in nature. They can be having a coelom or a false coelom that is pseudo coelomate group of animals and their body consists mainly of an open type of circulatory system. They do not possess lungs and they respire through some special structures such as a gills, trachea or sometimes even with the body surfaces. Invertebrates does not produce their own food. Thus they are heterotrophic in nature. They need to depend upon the other preformed food or dead organic remains. The reproduction could be taking place through asexual or sexual means and usually the fertilization is external to the body. Further, we look at in detail about some of the process that have been taking place in this invertebrates which is something unique. Okay, The invertebrates have one or two types of a digestive systems. Say one is of a incomplete and another one is of a complete digest system. Say for example, you look at the figure in the downside. You can able to see the one in the left side that is of the system of jellyfish is of a incomplete digestive system which mainly consists of a single opening that functions both as a mouth as well as anus for this particular organisms. Whereas if you look at into a round worm that have been shown there in the right hand side, it possesses a complete digestive system that is it has a separate openings for the mouth as well as the anus. 
Next, we look at into the points related to locomotion. That is the movement of the invertebrates. All invertebrates can be able to move on their own at least during some stages of their life cycle. However, they may differ in the structures that have been aiding their movements. Say, some invertebrates are simply carried along by water currents. They cannot be able to control their movement in a particular direction. For example, here is a jellyfish. Other invertebrates can be able to contract their muscles to move independent of the water currents. Mainly, they can aid their movement in the solid surfaces. They can also control the direction of that movement. Here a typical example are roundworms. The next example is those invertebrates that are having some specialized appendages for their movement. Say for example, they will be having a jointed legs for walking or climbing and even wings for flying. Very typical example is fly, which uses its wing for flying. The next one is related to the nervous system that have been present there in most of the invertebrates. This system helps them to sense and respond to the environment. The simplest form of nervous system is just a network of nerves that can be able to sense the touch. It is typically referred as a nerve net. In the diagram, you can able to see the nerve net functioning there in a hydra. Most of the invertebrates found to have a complex nervous system. Sometimes even a higher structure such as a brain could be present that will help in communicating the information between the different sense organs. Finally, we look at some points related to the reproduction there in the invertebrates. Most invertebrates can able to reproduce sexually. Apart from that, other asexual reproductions could also be seen there in the invertebrates. In sexual reproduction, diploid adults producing haploid gametes, that is the sperms and eggs, which fuses on the fertilization that develops into an zygote. Whereas in some species, this sperm and egg production could be present in a separate male and female individuals, whereas in other, they could be present in the same individual, representing a hermaphrodite group of organisms. Fertilization occurs when a sperm and an egg fuse to form the zygote. Zygote later develops into an embryo and eventually into a new adult organism. On the way, it may pass into one or more larval stages. Say, larval stage is a juvenile or immature stage of an animal. It generally quite different in form and function from the adult form of the same species. Here, the typical example is a dragonfly. The larva of the dragonfly can be able to swim freely in the water, whereas the adult dragonfly can be able to fly in the air. As I already told, some invertebrates can also be able to reproduce asexually. Two types of asexual reproduction are common. One is a fission, which takes place when an animal simply divides into two parts. Each part then regrows and establishes the missing part. This results in the formation of a two whole organisms. A typical example here is a starfish. Whereas the next case is a budding, which takes place when a parent form can be able to form a small bump or a bud. Here the typical examples are hydra. The bud remains attached to the parent while it develops into a new individual. 